Okay, so the first thing in a framework is, is actually looking at the people. Um, some things can be automated, some things don't need curation, but most things you want to set up within your organization this concept of, of a stewardship and you can have different names for this or different layers of it but the simplest simple is better in my opinion but people who are serving as subject matter experts and decision makers who can author um con you know information around your data like write definitions or curate reports or assign policy attributes or research quality issues or whatever um, or can review things that ever been other things up that others have done or approve or reject things that have been processed so I'm having different stewards for different types of activity, uh, for different types of, co of content uh, as well. So thinking back to that library example, you know, if someone comes in and says, uh, you know, I have a question on this quantum physics report I have to do, you're not going to send them over to the kids librarian in the kids section to talk to the kids librarian. That person, well, they may be capable of answering that question because most librarians are awesome, but you know the the best person to send them to is maybe someone on the other side of the library who, who works with that every day and not bother the kids librarian, um, who is probably better suited to answer the question on whether or not they have the new um, Dora or Dory Phantasmagoria book in or whatever. Um, so that's your sort of stewardship example. Oversight is the set of people who then are going to be looking over the stewards and the and the overall process and training everyone and making sure everything's going well so that's the first part of your framework is, is is talking about the human activity from the stewardship and 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 oversight the second as i mentioned is a framework is that it is it's it's really helpful to the initiative if you have everything brought into a single knowledge base if even if you can't get everything exclusively brought into that it's at least a starting point to, to reach out to any other places where you have information around your data. And this knowledge base should be open to as many consumers and creators as, as possible. So this is the place where uh, not, you don't have a bunch of silo documentation around each data system like within that data system or within a reporting tool or whatever, that you can sort of bring everything together into one central place within your organization for people to start searching for this, this stuff and understanding how things work both functionally and technically. Um, so having that central repository and having the people to kind of curate the content in that repository is an important part of the framework. The next part is then having processes designed to manage um, manage the curation or review or, or you know the gathering, the curation, the researching, and the and the um, supporting process. So the first is having what we call open points of entry for requests, issues, or questions. So you know a um, request for a new report or a change to report. We'll go through some of the types of content that you have. But any sort of new thing that's coming and having a point of entry there that can then get routed to the appropriate person through a workflow for stewardship, right? So a steward process to review things. And lastly, the terms of process is having as many automated content synchronization processes as possible. So, you know, there's a change to your database or someone writes a new report or they change your reference data list or there's data quality monitoring. That's gonna happen automatically if you can to feed the knowledge base and update it without the need for curation. But if there's a need for curation, have that get routed for review by the appropriate people. Um, we talk about this concept, I'm not gonna go into great detail of it, called just-in-time data governance, which is about, you know, um, if I go back to the library example. So I have a library and I've opened the library and it has uh, a thousand books in it, right? Now, there's gonna be people coming from all over the neighborhood to visit my library, and those thousand books are not gonna be enough for people to, um, to read all the books that they want. <laughs> you know, uh, we're a long way from all the books that we need. But if I had to wait until I had every book that anybody would ever possibly want in their life in my library before I let anyone in, then I, I'm never gonna open my library. But even if I only have a thousand books and people come in and say, I'm interested in this book, and we say, oh, we don't have that book, you know what, it's at this other library and I can get it transferred here, or maybe we can order for you or whatever. But that's this just in, this concept of just in time. So in your catalog, in your documentation of your data or the knowledge about your data, you're not gonna know everything. But um, if someone comes with a reported data quality issue or a question about a report or a new a, a, a data system that's not documented yet, if you have the ability to start a process to get that documented, to update the documentation on the report, to research that quality issue or do whatever, and to create that knowledge and the knowledge base 
on request, on demand, just in time, in a timely fashion to get back to them, they're gonna keep coming back. So, and, and that's a much better way to start uh, this process. So anyway, if you've got this framework, you're gonna apply it to kind of across all the content.